Okay, good afternoon. I uh, want to get started here with um, just a special congratulations to all the North Dakota teams that made it to state. Um, you know, to be the runners up is something special, but to the champions, New Rockford, Velva, and Horace and Cheyenne High School, you know, our hat goes off to you and, you know, what a special year. So congrats on that. Looking back quickly on uh, Missouri State, just offensively, you know, 55% on third down. Um, the nine explosive plays of 20 yards or more were huge. And then we were two, two for two on fourth down, really critical because that one situation could have got a little sticky if we don't come up with six points. Uh, and we were five for five in the gold zone. The run game was impressive. It was efficient. We were really good in our targeting. You know, on those pin and pull plays, sometimes you get three or four yards and you don't get the play you're looking for because the targeting is difficult. But I thought our pullers were really good um, at getting hooked up. Uh, our targeting all the way from the center out to the Z and the X receiver was at all-time high. It was really good. Our receivers and tight ends made all of our good runs uh, great. You know, without those guys, you don't, you don't create explosive plays. Uh, defensively, it just, I don't know, you could look at it like, man, they played a great first quarter and then they were okay. I thought we were excellent. You know, the fast start, you know, the first drive, three and out, ends with a sack. You know, the forced fumble on the very next uh, snap. And then Bison Nation and our defense forth, forced an offsides on fourth and four and a punt, or fourth and four, and we uh, forced a punt was just awesome. They were really good. Um, the defense was really good in the gold zone, you know, 50%. You know, I think we had four trips we defended, and they only scored twice. Uh, special teams, honestly, after looking at the tape, it's the first week I said we got some things to clean up. You know, we didn't handle the pooch kicks as well as I would like. Um, Anytime you just simply got a fair catch it, I, I think we should look deeper at our call. We need to be advancing the ball. Um, you know, the ball to be on the ground twice was disappointing. And then our kick cover team was, on paper, was productive. We got a couple guys that need to be reading their keys and uh, doing their job to the fullest a, a little bit better as we get going into South Dakota, being a very explosive South, uh, South Dakota special teams units. Um, on to the Coyotes. Uh, the respect level I have for Coach Nielsen and is second to none. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into my statement there, but the improvement uh, since the time that I left the league and, you know, we were playing these guys is just, it's, it's simply, it's really impressive. Um, they may be the most physical football team in the conference. We have to go prove that we are on Saturday. Uh, this coaching staff has always been very professional out on the road recruiting. Every time that I've come in, uh, across from them, every time that we've engaged in football conversations, I think the coaching staff, they have our experts within their systems. They have answers. Uh, if, if you're going to attack a certain area, they know how to respond. I have a great deal of respect for that. Um, this team is very well coached um, fundamentally. And then from an assignment standpoint, it's, it's, a, tight, it's a tight group. You know, they're going to make us work and, and earn everything we get. Uh, scheme and concepts will be one thing in this ballgame. But this thing's going to boil down to uh, some simple factors here. All right, fundamentals, fanatical effort, okay, and who finishes blocks and tackles will be the key to victory. Our goal this week as a staff is to simply position our, our kids um, to be able to go out, play fast and confident, and to put it in their hands to where we have opportunities to make plays and to be efficient and effective on both sides of the ball. I think creating explosive plays will be the underlying decision maker in this ball game. With that, I'll open up for questions. The vibe post game was very much, we're not done yet. Kind of what have you seen from the guys in a couple of days since the end of the Missouri State game yeah. as getting ready for South Dakota? Just even some seniors talking in their, their talks this week have already alluded to like, you know, that these thank yous are important. Um, but, you know, we don't want to be done. We want to stay together. We want to play and play as long as we can together. Um, and we're, we're embarking on that. You know, everything from this point forward, every game, each and every game, um, there's going to be a lot at stake for both teams, and you're, you're playing for a lot. So um, they're excited to continue the, the, the journey we're on and continue to write the legacy. I think I've said that a couple, two, three times. South Dakota's defense, one of the top scoring defenses in the country as well. Kind of what makes them so dangerous as a defensive unit? What, Twofold. Number one, they're winning on the offensive win rate on third downs is only 37%. You know, and if you go down the list here, fourth down offenses are only winning 21% of the time. They've only allowed touchdowns 60, or uh, offenses are only getting touchdowns 57% of the time. Those are critical areas. 
Okay, I think the, the plus five in the turnover margin is, is really solid. But they stop the run, and they, they, they force you into uh, some uncomfortable situations. They force you to redirect your game plans often. They stop. Normally, they stop the number one thing that you want to get accomplished. And so to have counter punches against them, to make them work and grind, um, pre-snap, you know, we're going to have to be on point. That's, that's what makes them special, along with having three players on all three levels that are, that are standouts. Uh, the Gaze kid is, you know, Nick Gaze is no joke. Eight, eight, eight sacks, 10 TFLs. Um, Bryant's had four games of 11 tackles or more. And then I think their strong safety, their boundary safety, is physical. Uh, I mean, if you don't get him blocked, he can really affect ball carriers coming downhill. And he's had two INTs and eight or nine PBUs as well. Tim, going into the last game on the road, you bet your last game against issue was at South Dakota, knowing the conference championship was on the line. Just, I know it goes unsaid, but having a road game to do this, the challenge of doing that. I, just in a weird, small way. It, it's just like maybe it's just what you need to really be honed in and to have that focus at an all-time high. Because I am a believer that our guys would, would show up and are going to show up ready to go. We've done that 11 times this year, and that's a compliment to them. Uh, their readiness, the leadership on the team. Um, you know, we like to play 12 games in the Fargo Dome every year. But the schedule is the schedule, and, and I just – I think our fans are going to travel well. Um, and I like the idea of getting into a bunkhouse and settling in for a night and waking up ready to win. Last year, you know, I guess you ended their season playoff game down in the same spot. The score was obviously a widespread. How do, you, how do you kind of just remove that, remove the last time you guys played these guys from the, from the docket? Well, I think you could easily just show them the first game, you know, and then, like, let's get into comparing and contrasting. They did this versus them. They, we're just, we got to keep fighting that, Russ. I mean, it, right now, it, you know, it's interesting. It would be easy to reflect back on where we're at. And, you know, it's been a, a, a nice run of 10 games here. I just, we have to fight that like crazy. It's a one day. It's a one week at most self-evaluation of what needs to be improved upon. And we still have room for growth. I think our best effort is still out there in our the full 60 minutes. I mean, I'm telling you guys, as coaches, right, like you would love to go out and play a perfect game, you know, of 12 series on both sides of the ball and see how that plays out. And, I mean, that's kind of always the objective is to get the very best out of everybody. And that's the focus more than looking back on last year. I, I've, I've discouraged them. Um, going all the way back to UND. You know, it's more about what we're doing and the task at hand. Northern Iowa, you've given up 18 total points on defense, and not that there have been poor defensive performances, but the last two weeks have not been to that center. Anything on defense that you're kind of looking to, to zero in on? Yeah, I just had my guy, Jared, Jared Taylor. You know, he's excellent at getting me some information. When I probably just would say third down. You know, we had a couple third and longs slip away from us. A little bit there in that game, extended a drive. But ultimately, I think we're doing a really good job of applying our philosophy of if we're going to give up some yards, fine, but let's, let's keep the ball in front of us. I just think third down in general, you know, and sometimes that's related to players and the availability to certain players and the things that you can do. I know Grant's working hard at it right now. I look forward to see if we can be a better third down defense, you know, moving forward. I think you touched on it after the game Saturday, but the running backs being more focused of the offense this year, why is that important to you? Is there an identity thing there? Well, yeah, no, I, I really believe in some of the things that come off of, uh, you know, right now we're probably, I shouldn't say this, we're somewhere in the range of 70, 75 shotgun versus under center. Okay, and I don't know if that's an ideal number, and maybe that's not totally accurate if someone looks that up on pro football focus. Um, but I think some of the things that come off of underneath center you know, football, uh, really near and dear to my philosophies and my belief in this game. Um, I think so much of defensive football now is predicated on where is the back aligned in shotgun, and then they can deploy one or two calls. You know, I, I, I hear it every week in the defensive staff room. And so I've just always, I've always really believed in, you know, the running back being back there behind the quarterback and all your options are open with all our different schemes and there's no pre-snap tell to where you're going. You know, it's easier to be balanced, strong, and weak. It's easier to be balanced, you know, do you run the ball at the bubble, the one technique, or do you run it at the three technique? I just, there's a special place in my heart for all the tailbacks that I've coached here. And I've, we've won a lot of games, and that's really um, led to a lot of strong feelings towards tailback run. It's probably that simple. Yeah, the quarterbacks aren't carrying nearly as much as they used to. 
Was that just a matter of change of coordinators, or is that on purpose? I think that's I think that's a little circumstantial. I mean, Cam's been battling. He's been healthy for a couple of weeks. Um, I've always, uh, you know, Coach Bull made a big impression on me. He's like, you know, Tim, man, we didn't want to run Josh Allen 15 times till we had to. You know, I just, my general thought is when we run the quarterback, I want those to be real clean, efficient, explosive plays rather than him being the guy that's taking the pounding. Um, no, I, I, I would be okay with a heavy quarterback run game if that's what we needed. Um, the loss of Cole has made a big impact on that. I think it, it's made a big impact on some of our play action stuff that we had planned going into the season with him as well. You know, keeping Cam, you know, upright in the pocket, running backs having success. You know, what can you say about the growth of your offensive line from fall camp to where we're at now? They just, the old line's a little tricky because it's important for us coaches to stay humble and hungry. But if we stay to coaching and teaching and believe that guys will get better, it's a position that they can and will. Billy Turner was just here to talk to a bunch of our younger old linemen. And he said, you know, I played 10 years in the National Football League, you know, four in college, and it still is never good enough. Like, they have to understand that there's always something that can be corrected, that something can be improved upon. But when they take that one thing per day and they improve on it, it starts to happen pretty quick because collectively, you know, playing together and being connected as five is pretty strong and tough. So out of that group, what I've seen is, number one, I've seen great leadership. There's two guys that are rocks and Mason and uh, Gray. Okay, and then you, you couple that with uh, Dan Larson, who has a really good – idea of what we want to do, what we want to be conceptually and a clear vision of our fundamentals and techniques and he's hitting repeat. And then like I just I I really have been impressed with Fraley and MP. Like their maturation and their their um where there are from a maturity standpoint, understanding concepts and going out there and applying technique and fundamentals is really good. Those two kids have played really well. I'd be surprised if they're not on the newcomer team at least for all conference, I really would. Um, and then, you know, we've gotten good solid play out of Rock. Um, the one thing I've challenged Dan is just continue to look at how do you get Bo or how do you get Jack in the game to keep pushing Rock forward. How's your cornerback health right now with Duffy and Jaquise? Yeah, Duffy ran around last night with us. We weren't in pads, didn't have his helmet on. And so today he'll get a splint on the finger. And if he's comfortable to play, I think there's a shot that he'll play. Um, Jaquise, just, you know, he's been battling this AC separation, AC strain all year. And, uh, I mean, it was a pretty good shot for him. You know, it, he's got to continue to try to get bigger, stronger, and faster. Um, I don't – I would say doubtful with Jaquise. Coach, you're just shy of 40 points a game. You're an offensive coordinator by trade. Randy obviously could do it. Jake's new. And Cam could probably call the whole offense from the line. How do you kind of – how are you making this such a successful collaboration when – too many cooks in the kitchen could be a result. Let's throw two more cooks in there. Dan Larson was a coordinator at Duluth, and Joel Brashoner was a coordinator at Mankato. That made last January pretty sticky, quite frankly. Um, <clears throat> no, I think they're all kind of staying in their areas, in their lanes. Number one, they're staying focused on coaching their position. Number, number two, it's a very humble group that likes to pass credit to each other. And I, I just think the collaboration between Jake and, and Randy has been critical, along with Crutch in there. And then the job that Joe um, and Dan have done in cultivating the thought process and the vision for each and every game plan in the run game to Jake, right? Because Jake is probably caught up to full speed now with the run game, but that all took some time, and my, my hat goes off to those guys. I mean, I have some impact on some things that I feel really strongly about, you know, which are words concept names, um, technique and fundamentals. But lately, I've been just trying to stay out of their way. They've done a good job. And, and I think anytime you get quarterback play and offensive line play the way we have, you always have a shot to be productive. Your two tackles, obviously your senior tackles, standouts against their two good DNs. Is that a heavyweight matchup? I think so. I, I do. Now, the one thing I'll say, I haven't really dove in much except for with the individuals. You know, I mentioned Nick Gaze having eight sacks, so forth and so on. They play some heavier front techniques than what you might see out of, like, say, Cold Green, our defense. You know, I have pretty good knowledge. I mean, Miles Mitchell – or uh, Miles, okay, their, their uh, safeties coach, you know, comes from Iowa. I was around him um, a lot. And I, I have a lot of respect for Miles Taylor and, and Phil Parker and these Iowa guys. There's a lot of Iowa pedigree on this coaching staff. 
And so on early downs, the pass rush isn't necessarily the number one concern. It's more the run fits and how good they are playing run blocks. But those two guys and what they do with their DNs versus the run and on the pass, that's going to be a critical matchup for us. Can you just speak to kind of the journey he's been on, specifically since the SDSU game kind of the last month and just what he would have if he's back? Yeah, I don't. It's afforded me an unbelievable opportunity to get to know him. I've, I've tried to make an impression on him that I'm very interested in him as a future coach. Um, we've had many conversations about that. He shows up with a smile on his face. He loves throwing balls to the receivers when he is out um, or, or, or we're resting them. Or, it's been all, of, all the people involved with high speed distance, mileage, is, mileage in practice or yardage in practice, um, strength and conditioning, the medical, like we've all worked really well at this together, but without a great attitude and without an attitude of being a team first guy, you know, I don't think any of it's possible. So my hat goes off to Raj. He's handled it. Um, some might say the decision to want to come back is selfish. Good. We need a little bit of that. A guy wants to be a bison a little longer and play his best football and his best opportunity possible. That's outstanding. So Raj has been great. Is that official now that he, he didn't go through the walk? Raj. He didn't go through the walk and he's... He's not on my list to speak this week. So I'm, I'm excited about that. But I, again, I kind of answer that the same way I did last year. I'm real uneasy of answering any questions about the portal and guys' specific futures or the future of this, that, or the other thing. I, I just, I would look like not very smart if I would go down that list and predict where they're going to end up a year from now or two years from now. We're going to fight for this locker room to be the same locker room that we have right now, you know, with as many kids as possible. Is there a postseason procedure that could, for Raj, so that come next fall camp, this is just not a thing anymore? Oh, as far as the injury, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he'll get stronger. I mean, with a good with a good month off, he would be close to one hundred percent. You know, so once we can get to the back end of, um, or get to January and February, depending on how long we play, Raj will heal up good. There's there's been evidence of this injury healing up as fast as two months, but that's if you. You don't run him and then stop him and then run him and stop him. So he's just he's been tough and gritty, and we'll get we'll get him healthy. He'll get back. How close are you captain at the moment? Like we need you. Like how close are you from that? Uh, the truth, or <laughs> I think it it was uh, fourteen nothing, right? And I looked at him. I just said, Raj, keep your helmet on. Hang in there. And like I thought, you know, in my mind, I was thinking we're a score away. To me, just saying, put your helmet away and we'll roll the dice without you, kind of thing. So that's what happened in the game. And there was a moment that I gave that thought. What's the weekly Wisniewski report? Well, you guys got the video. Um, he looked okay. He looked okay in individual drills last night. I probably got to see Wednesday's workout. Today will be an off day for him. See Wednesday's workout and his comfort. He's probably doubtful for this week again. I wouldn't even put it that questionable. You know what? I know you're just around here this year, back from this one year, but when you look at South Dakota and where they were even just two years ago, they weren't very good. And now they're one of the top, whatever they have, four teams or whatever in the country. Do you, what, what differences do you see? Do you know how they got there? I know it's, you know, you're coming from the outside. You're no, I'm looking at Steve Ferentz. Okay, Tim Morrison. Nathan Nelson was a walk-on DN at Iowa with me, with us. Miles Taylor, Bob Nielsen, defensive quarter, coordinator, Travis Johansson. Johansson. Fundamentals and physical and aggressive and belief in each other and uh, unbelievable toughness. I can comment personally on three of those guys. They are tough people that are going to demand the right things in football. And my respect level for Coach Nielsen is just unbelievable. I think they've done a nice job with their transition offensively, too. You know, they've, they've went from a pure spread passing deal, and, you know, the receiver is the all-time leading receiver in, in school history, but a lot of that, I think, was before the coaching change. Um, and you just see that physical toughness is up there at the forefront. I think right now the way that it shook out, the, the top three teams in the league, there's not a whole lot of difference in how we deploy things and what we're trying to get done. And then I think this year specifically, the quarterback who I have um, a great relationship with his father and actually his mother because she works right at 
Buffalo High School. I mean, an unbelievable family. Todd Ballman's a good friend of mine. Um, he's get, done a good job of improving, and he's better this year. And conceptually, I just – they're on point. Everything they do makes sense, and then they, they don't mind taking shots, and they have some tricks up their sleeve, and they've got it going pretty good. I mean, they've got our full attention. What stands out about Bowen that's impressed, that's improved from last year to this year? A progression. You know, just bump, bump, bump. I got him charted uh, out of 110 completions, getting to number three or four, you know, four or five, or no, sorry, at least four or five times in full field progressions. And then even in some uh, build it type concepts, he's getting to number three or four another five or six times. And so when we're zone dropping, man, we got to be melting with that quarterback's eyes and we got to be ball out breaks because he's pretty good at identifying um, coverage where the weaknesses of coverages are and getting to them. And then I, the other thing that I think he's grown a lot, he's got total command of the run game now. He's getting multiple runs flipped away from pressures. He's doing a really good job at the line of scrimmage, running away from bad numbers. You know, safety rotation over here, let's go here. And he's controlling a lot of that, and he's doing a good job. And their back showing an unbelievable understanding of defensive structure and who they're responsible to beat. That's five's greatest strength. All right, thank you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, you got one more? Yeah, my question was I'm making sure I can cut it off. But, uh, you know, the quarterback, Bauman, you know, he can make a lot of plays on, you know, with his legs and his arms. But what are you guys seeing defensively of having to? I'm, I'm not real sure he can make plays with his legs as much as some of the other guys that we've seen. I know he's a strong athlete. What I mean by that, he's a hard get to the ground guy, you know, and just going through the recruiting process with him. We were full goal. I mean, at the time, we weren't going to recruit a lefty. You know, and, and just he was impressive all the way to his sophomore year and all the way through it. He's he's a strong, big kid. You know, he's a very mature kid. Um, I would be shocked if he doesn't handle this environment and this situation really well. And so we're going to have to do a lot. Each and you know, every quarterback has a certain amount of disruptions and hits that all of a sudden their rhythm and timing's off. We need to get home and make that a factor. It needs to be more, you know, I guess like the second game than it was the first. Um.